Okay, so some of you have asked me how I wired up this, a ballast, from a compact fluorescent bulb to operate one of these, a linear tube. So it's actually pretty simple. But first of all, I think uh, we'll take a look at this drawing I made of a spiral compact fluorescent bulb. You see how at the ends you have a filament, each with two wires coming out. That's going to be connected up inside this plastic base. Now imagine this spiral stretched out straight, and you have a linear tube, this. And at each end, you also have a filament which has two wires, each going to a co corresponding pin on each end. Now, let's take a look at your classic preheat start circuit. You have a hot wire coming in through a switch into the ballast. It's a simple choke coil in this case. Then you have it go through one pin on the end of the lamp. through the filament, and then out the other pin, through the starter, and then back into a, the other end, through the other filament, and then out to the neutral. That's your classic preheat start fluorescent lamp circuit. Now, on a CFL circuit, you're dealing with an electronic ballast, which is just this circuit board here. Now, different manufacturers would configure their circuit boards differently, so you'll have to take a look at how your lamp is wired up when you take it apart. But in this case, you have a hot and neutral coming in that goes into the circuit board, and then you actually have four different wires going into the lamp. So you have one set of wires going into one end of the tube. I'm using a linear tube in this drawing and then another set of wires going to the other end. So we'll come back to this thing. So first you have your power coming in. I'll tell you about that later. And you have what goes out to the lamp. Now, depending on the manufacturer, they'll use a different starting circuit. This manufacturer, Top Light, just basically wires a capacitor between the two ends of the lamps. So if we go back to my preheat start circuit right here, imagine that starter as that capacitor right here, and that choke coil, and this neutral wire as the rest of these fancy electronics right here. So what we do is, if we go back to this thing, you have to find out which two sets of contacts, let's flip this over, find out which set of contacts go through the starting capacitor. In this case, uh, it's labeled on the circuit board, you have P4 and P5, those go through that starting capacitor. So, imagine that starting capacitor in place of the starter. Then you have what the power to the bulb, which gets its power from the rest of the circuit. In this case, it's P3 and P6. So you take those and wire them to the other set of pins. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, different manufacturers have different ways of configuring the circuit board, so not all ballast circuit boards will be the same. But let's say you have one of these and you just took it apart, and you're looking at this part, you'll see that there are two wires leading from one end and two wires leading to the other end. Basically, just uh, cut them off, solder extra wires on if needed to extend it, and then just transfer those wires to one end of the tube and to the other end of the tube like that. Now for power, 
this board has a hole marked F1 and P2, which go to the bottom of the base. Here's one I cut apart. F1 goes to the hot, which is this little thing at the very bottom. It actually goes through that fuse right there. And that supplies power into the ballast. And then the neutral is P2, which goes to the outer shell. So in theory, if you left this in there, okay, then you could simply screw a light socket in and then you've extended the wires out to the tube and then you could just screw it into a light socket and light that up. That's what I did in my previous video. But let's say you want to wire this to a cord and put it in a light fixture. So now let's take a look at one of these two prong plugs. Okay. You have two wires, if you're looking at it closely, it's called a zip cord. Okay, now the neutral wire on a cord like this is always the one that's identified. In case uh, of this, there's actually ridges. I don't know if you could see them or not, but you can actually feel them if you run your thumb across the cord like that. That's your neutral wire. Neutral's always identified on a cord like this. And th it could be ridges like this case, or in another case, uh, you might see a white stripe. That would be like the cord on my TV, or there would be writing on it. Although, uh, some writing, if there's ridges on it, the writing might be on the hot wire, which is the smooth one. Another thing to keep in mind is neutral is always the wire that's connected to the wider of the two blades. Hot is always the narrower of the two blades on a polarized cord. So keeping that in mind, if you wanted to wire this to a cord, you basically have to find out where hot and neutral go and wire it to their corresponding wires. Okay, now th as I said men earlier that different ballast, different lamps manufacturers would have different ways of configuring the ballast. If you took one of these apart, okay, basically find out which wire on the ballast circuit board runs down to the base of the lamp and that would be your hot and the other one will be your neutral and that's how you would wire a cord to it. 